Good afternoon, and thanks for having us in. New this midday, a Sioux Falls man is headed to federal prison for his role in selling a large amount of meth. 29-year-old James Verbrugge was sentenced to 15 years behind bars, followed by five years of supervised release. Authorities say Verbrugge provided the drug sold to a confidential informant last April. The transaction took place in a grocery store parking lot where they exchanged more than 300 grams of per pure meth. For Brudge was indicted in September and pleaded guilty in December. Illegal drugs continue to be a growing problem for law enforcement across the country. Of the more than 57,000 federal sentences nationally in 2021, more than a third of them involved drugs. Nearly all of those drug sentences were for trafficking. While meth made up half of the types of drug, fentanyl has seen a dramatic increase in federal cases nationwide. From 2017 to 2021, fentanyl increased nearly 900%. It's a trend that local law enforcement is also seen. I mean, it's like a never-ending circus wheel that we can't get off because we're we're always, unfortunately, trying to play catch up and get a to get caught up, and there's always the next whatever that's coming out. Coming up on this week's Inside Call, and we're going to take a look at the growing fentanyl problem and hear from the Moody and Lincoln County sheriffs on what they're seeing at a local level. Also new this midday, the man accused of pretending to have a bomb during a Sioux Falls bank robbery plans to enter a guilty plea. 23-year-old Ayud Muhammad signed documents admitting to taking $200,000 from the Wells Fargo Bank on North Cliff Avenue last August. Police say he stole a customer's keys and left, but he didn't get far. When officers arrived, he was still in the parking lot. Muhammad is scheduled to plead guilty in federal court on March 1st. According to the plea agreement, he faces a maximum of 25 years behind bars. A Sioux Falls man faces child pornography charges. 35-year-old David Darger was booked into jail yesterday afternoon. According to court documents, he faces three counts of possessing child pornography and was scheduled to make his first court appearance this morning in Lincoln County. Police are crediting tips from the public that helped them find a missing Sioux Falls girl. Police say 13-year-old Rainy Genesee was found safe in the northwest part of the city yesterday. When officers found her, she was running from one home to another and was outside without shoes on. Police say she was not hurt. Turning to weather for a first look at what we're seeing now and then also a system that's coming next week that has a fair amount of attention right now. Let's turn it over to Brian in the Storm Center. Yeah, Dan, uh, we're going to talk about the long range picture coming up in a little bit. But first today, we've got some very nice weather and showcasing that Terry Peak. It looks like a pleasant afternoon there. Temperatures into the 40s and obviously, yeah, a lot of folks are enjoying this time of the day and yeah, all the activities there. You can see uh, also great bear. Things are coming along here nicely this afternoon. Should be a very fine weekend in the Sioux Falls area. Yeah, points in between two. Uh, take in the nice weather. Sunshine helps a lot. Then these midday temperatures are responding to that. We already have 54 in Rapid City. We've really taken a turn up uh, on those numbers in the last couple of hours. Now, Piers at 38. We're catching up there. Sioux Falls now 23 and climbing. And then Aberdeen is sitting at 18 degrees. So we'll see more of that colder air evacuating the northeast. Uh, even that Sisseton number has popped up to 27. And the winds, as forecast, have jumped a few notches in northeastern South Dakota. But overall, that's just kind of part of the, the process here of pushing the mercury higher. We see those temperatures today at 35 in Mitchell, 41 in Chamberlain, and then again, plenty of 50s in the far west. A lot to say about next week, and we'll save all of that for the next segment in just a few minutes. Thank you, Brian. South Dakota is joining 23 states in filing a lawsuit against the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The lawsuit is against the Biden administration's Waters of the United States rules. South Dakota Attorney General Marty Jackley says the rule would change the wording of navigable waters to include bodies of water that many farmers and ranchers regularly use. Jackley says this could put an undue burden on them and subject them to federal punishment for using the water without permission from the EPA. 
Just three weeks after the nation saw the disturbing footage of Tyree Nichols' violent arrest, five former Memphis police officers pleaded not guilty to second-degree murder and other charges. Nichols' mother and stepfather were in the courtroom with their attorney, Ben Crump. Bradley Blackburn reports. The five former Memphis police officers appeared in the courtroom for the first time more than a month after the death of Tyree Nichols. At this time, we waive the formal reading of the indictment off of the court, a plea of not guilty. The 29-year-old died in a hospital just three days after being pulled over and brutally beaten by the black officers in an incident caught on camera. All five have since been fired and now face a range of charges, including second-degree murder. We want something here statewide to make sure that we have a state law that codifies duty to intervene, duty to render aid, duty to de-escalate. Nichols is the latest police-involved death to spark nationwide outrage and protests. I'm waiting for this nightmare, basically, that I'm going through right now. I'm waiting for somebody to wake me up. The Nichols family and their attorneys have also raised questions about police culture and training. I know my son is gone. I know I'll never see him again, but we have to start this process of justice right now. The five officers involved in Nichols' death are all out on bond. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. The officers are due back in court May 1st. Two other Memphis police officers have also been relieved of duty as a result of the attack, as well as three fire departments, EMTs, who responded to the scene.